Okay, we were talking today about on Facebook about um, sculpting mouths and um, somebody was saying that they wouldn't mind some guidance on how to make baby mouths so I thought I'd just do a quick video this evening. <coughs> um, I've just done a really, really rough um, nose and, and cheeks here so that I can build the mouth underneath it. I'm not actually going to do a full sculpt, I'm just going to um, just build up the lips really and show you how how it works. Anybody who, who's um, an absolute beginner. Um, so basically, yeah, the, the cheeks come down from the nose, um, go into the eye there, um, and there, um, this kind of this kind of angle, and it comes round and that goes into the cheek either side, and then <coughs> down into the mouth. Now, the the profile of the, uh, I'm not going to, as I say, go above the nose at all, but the profile of underneath the nose and the lip, the lip comes out. It, it, if you actually look at a baby skull, this is the, this is the, the skull of the nose, the nose will be coming here and then the, the lip goes around, you can see the, the angle, so it, it's not straight across, it goes slightly curved. Okay, so what we need is um, to build up the the clay here. <coughs> I've got a little stand for it, but I'm probably going to work with it in my fingers because I don't actually like using the stands. I like to uh, to hold it. So I'm just going to grab some clay. So I just build up the profile using bits of globs of clay, so um, I'm just going to shove a few bits on here and then, and then build the angle a bit better. So where, where the, um, the crease comes down from the nose, some babies have more of a crease than others, some, some have very little or, or at all, um, this will have a little bit of a crease. So basically it comes up and round so it's in a kind of something like that in the way of the shape but from this side it comes out so the nose goes in there and then it comes out quite a bit so I need to build that out a bit more. basic profile of it first of all. The dog's not impressed. So I think that's probably nearer to it, the, uh, the way the, the lip comes out underneath the nose. <coughs> so I'm just going to work on that a bit. So it, it goes obviously into the nostril there. Nostril comes down and meets the lip. And we get this so first of all you just get you get your dint there <coughs> some more than others but so basically we've got this sort of lip shape going on too much about the um the nose as I say it's just there just to gauge where everything is. So we've got this this um 
slight dint and then um, it goes round so that's the basic shape of it and so we start sort of forming the actual lip the top lip now it doesn't it isn't flat and it isn't it isn't flat either way it goes round so it curves around so and looking at from from the front it's slightly curved that way so some more <coughs> clay on the bottom here I can uh, work it in don't be afraid to just keep playing with the shape putting clay on taking it off again so that I can work with it. So we get this sort of heart shape, sweetheart lips. Which curl round underneath. The width of the top lip is usually just a teeny bit wider than the actual nostrils, so it'll go from there to there. in at the sides so on the profile the front lip comes out and then the lower lip tucks behind it and it goes back almost 
almost horizontal into the chin. Put a little chin on. Just sketch it on at the moment. So the little chin goes even further back. So that's kind of the profile of it. Very, very roughly. top lip has this sort of little sucky thing going on here, so it has quite a prominent sort of little sucky bit that sticks down, which is um, almost like a little blob. Stick a little blob there for now. Dog storing. I'm not used to um, sculpting um, on camera. It was her first for me.
So the, the bottom lip sort of disappears behind the top lip. You can see that on the camera. <coughs> and then it disappears even more so underneath that into the chin. And the bottom lip, it sort of is pronounced sort of for a kind of, wow, well, like say from there to there. And then it goes into a kind of a, a non-lip, but it carries on down like that. Which is not part of the lip, the lip kind of goes to there. But the the ridge continues Come down. Oops. So what we end up with is sort of like quite lots of fat from the cheeks.
So the, the gels come down sort of a little bit lower than the mouth. There. But then they fall away into the the chin, which is actually more, more prominent than than I've made it so far, unless it So as I say, there's this sort of thing coming down, this this thing going on where it, it kind of continues even though it's not the lip. see what's going on here so so basically you've got your sort of sucky lip bit here obviously it needs a lot of refining but you can see the basic shape There's a lot of, of work doing to it, but Obviously all baby smells are different like all of us but So what I like to do is a kind of <coughs> a 
it's just sort of a semicircle to start with. And then and then define the actual lip within that. So the lip kind of comes up to here and here. But keep the actual shape but define the lip. Love playing the clay. So I, thought, I don't think I'll do much more of this, but <clears throat> you can see kind of how I've built up the contours of. Um, the cheek, the lip, the, the upper lip, the bottom lip, um, I don't know if you can see the way that kind of goes, the, lip, the, front, the top lip comes out and then the bottom lip, it's not perfect, I'd, I'd probably do a lot more work to it if it was actually going to be a baby this one, I might make it into a baby, bless it, after all this work. But um, you can see sort of how I've started to build the shape of it. And then it goes into the chin. Which, which goes in still further. So you can see better there. Slightly exaggerated contours there, and I'll probably do a bit more work on it, but so that's the start of obviously this would go back into the eyes. That goes back still further. Excuse my dog snoring. So, yep, so as you can see, it's kind of 
kind of getting the shape there now. I don't know if it's been helpful or not, but um, it's been fun. The dog's well away. So, yep, yeah, that's how that's how I do it. Anyway, just basically start with with the point. I usually start with the eyes actually, and um, work my way down and um, get the contours. It's, it's really important that you get the contours because otherwise you're just going to work two dimensionally. So you, you're going to get you need to get the plane of the the cheeks. Okay. Very rough, but it's 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 a start. Right, I thought I might push on with this and see what see what happens with it. So uh, I was just going to do this as um, as a mouth. Uh, it was just a demonstration how to how to do mouths, but um, <clears throat> it's just rather cute. So I think I might just push on and see what see what we what we get out of it. So I'm going to work upwards, and um, I think it's slightly wonky. It'll be all right smooth and get it that's the trouble you need to make sure it's um, some, um, symmetrical I think this is slightly wonky at the moment but that's okay <clears throat> right I don't know with with having not planned to do eyes I don't know whether I've got deep enough sockets here I might have to dig away and I'm not absolutely certain what size eyes to do so I've got so I've got 18 mil eyes here I think they'll probably do, but I might have to dig away more at the uh, socket. So they can go in deep enough. <clears throat> Normally I work on the eyes first and work outwards. So um, this is a bit of a weird way of doing it really. me. Okay, I think these are 18 mil eyes. I think they're approximately the right size. So I'm putting them in um, so that the inner edge sort of kind of comes in line with the nostrils and um, there's about the same amount of space in between the eyes as the width of the eye. And make sure that they're <coughs> even and make sure that they're all they're both forward facing. That's important. Um, <clears throat> it's very easy to do them on a on a curve. We need to have them both on the same line exactly. It's the only straight line we really have. If they're not, they will catch the light in the wrong place. You'll get a a um, the little sparkle in the eye, the little. Um, light you'll get it in a different place on each eye. So they need to be both exactly in line and the same distance forward. around the eye to cement them in. Just to make sure they're in place. Don't move about. We need clay behind the eye too. This will all get built up.
We have snoring dogs again. <coughs> Different dog this time, snoring. I'm sure the other one will catch up. <coughs> Makes it sound like I'm a very heavy breather. basically building up the clay around it. I've not decided 100% whether I'm going to do open or closed eyes, but I think I'm going to do open eyes. <coughs> Even if I do closed eyes, I usually put the eyes in as well, because um, then I can be sure that I've, I've got the, uh, the eyelid going over the eyeball correctly. But I think with this one I'll do open eyes. On the skull, <coughs> on the baby skull, um, the eye socket, the edge of the eye socket, um, actually goes right to the edge of the the face. So there's very little on the outside of the eye socket in the way of flesh. There's not much. There's no fatty flesh around here, so that's all bone. So the eyes go to the edge. But if you look, the, the skull comes out further at the back. So it gives the appearance of the head being wider than the eyes. But actually it just disappears backwards. So we need to build the skull out at the back. Because it goes, it goes much wider at the back than at the front. So... The edge of this eye here is where the edge of the skull will be, and then it'll go back and outwards. <coughs> now the actual eyeball... Here, as you can see, it's on a level with the, the bridge of the nose here. So we need to build that out more because it, it, it isn't like that. It, it is behind. If you if you picture where the where the eyeball would go on the skull, it would be here, and then the and then the um, the bridge of the nose comes out further. <clears throat> so it's a good sort of quarter inch behind the, the nose so we do need to build this out more. And obviously um, we need to build this around the eye anyway. Placing some clay on it at the moment just for just to uh, sketch out where it's going to go. Start working it into some kind of shape here. Now the human eye, the, the lid comes <coughs> over the top more than the bottom, which means that you, you get to see um, the bottom part usually of the of the iris, but not the top. 
so it sort of sits underneath the top lid. And very young babies, particularly small babies, they're their eyeball, I don't think when they're born, is that much, grows that much. So their eyeball is going to be quite big for the size of their skull. And quite often you see very little of the white. So uh, that's why they, they often look like they've got big, big irises. Um, because... Because not a lot of the white is showing. In fact, lots of newborn babies don't have very open eyes anyway. But this one's going to. Actually, I think this baby is starting to look like it's got a kind of oriental look to it. See what happens. Sometimes you just play around with it and you find that the face you need just just appears.
needs to be a lot more built up here. Just continually adding clay, taking it away, adding it, taking it away. Dog's not impressed. We need a real concave bit here where it, it, it goes in and there. This bit is like a ski slope coming down off the nose and the same the other side sometimes it can be dramatic sometimes it's it's not so much I'm going for a not so dramatic look with this one <coughs> previous um, babies I've made have been more Contoured, this one is going to be a bit more. Not quite as uh, contoured, I think. Having done the lips last night, I'm going to just go and uh, shatter them now. Don't be afraid to undo what you've done, even if you think what you've done is perfect. If you did it once, you can do it again. So, you know, even if you do perfect lips, they're not quite right, you want some, something slightly different, just change them. It's not a problem. Look at there. It's just continually playing with it and changing them, changing everything. That's the fun of it. And then you'll you'll do something and you think, oh no, I've messed it up. Just keep going. Get it back again. Don't be afraid. Don't don't ever be afraid to do any more to it. And don't be satisfied with with something that you're not hundred percent with, just because just because you're frightened to get make it any worse. Go for it.
nostrils. <coughs> nostrils tend to be higher up than the uh, septum, just fra fractionally.
Okay, I've spent several hours uh, working on this sculpt, uh, which I've not bored everybody by doing on camera. And this is where I'm up to now. This is, um, I'm really quite pleased with this. Um, that's his profile. Um, so this is, I've decided a little boy, Daniel. Um, he's not finished yet, but I'm going, I need to do his ears. So I'm going to do his ears now. Make a small circle, flatten it, and cut it in half. So each each side of the circle, I'm going to make it into a kind of like an orange segment. Same size. So we have two similar sized orange segments. So I'm going to position the orange segment on his on his head. Now it's sort of between the eye and the mouth on a slight angle and on the jawline. So what would be the imaginary jawline here? It doesn't actually have a, a jawline. So it'd be about there. So it looks right from the front. So if you have a look from the front, you should be able to see a little bit of it. And then I'm going to put the other one on the other side in the same place. And look from above to check it's it's in approximately the same place as far as front to back goes. And check all angles at the front to make sure it's the same height approximately. Now I quite like fairly prominent ears on a baby, especially a little boy. I quite like to be able to see them from the front. Uh, it will stick out a bit more than this, but uh, because I, I'll, I'll be putting adding the outside bit, I'm just going to blend this in. It's just going to form part of the the head at the moment, and the same on the other side. Don't worry about the back bit. Uh, the bat back bit. Just blend in the front bit. We are. Again, slightly backwards, slightly backwards from the eye to the mouth approximately. Eye to the mouth. Okay. Right, now I'm going to roll a long piece like that. Oops. Like that. And this goes from about the middle of the ear, round, round the back of the ear, and to the lobe. I won't do the other side now. I'll do I'll do this side first. Quite often I um, I'll bake the first side before I start the second side because I don't I, you always end up squishing it. So blend that bit, bit in. That's going to be the lobe. Don't worry about this back bit at the moment. Just blend it so it, it meets it. And then this part goes right into the ear. Down there. So that's the basic shape. Round and down and down. This this bit here, it's sort of like um, curves over. If you feel your own ear, you can see that. That's what happens. And then it goes down in, and we get this little flappy bit here. Behind this, we get the the deep area that comes out. Now sometimes it comes out 
further than the rim of the ear. Sometimes it, it doesn't. I quite like them when they do that. I don't always do them, but I do quite like them when they're fairly prominent, those, that bit. I'm missing half my sculpting tools here, so I'm just going to have to um, make do with what I've got. So this bit here sometimes comes out quite deep. So what you actually see uh, on, from this angle is this bit coming out. Don't always, sometimes you see the rim, but, but very often you do see that bit. And then the rim is tucked in behind it. That's how, that's how this little chap is going to be anyway. And then there's kind of a, a, a dip, um, a little weird dippy thing here. So that's the basic shape of it. So I need to refine this. I need to find my tools and refine it a little bit. And um, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I still haven't found my sculpting tools, so I'm just going to have to make do. Finish off this here.
a bit too big this ear. Take a bit off it. Just a case of refining it, adding a teeny bit, taking a little bit away, squishing a little bit. I really would help if I had my normal tools.
I'm not sure how it goes. Just have a look at your own ear and have a feel. Because to be honest, the baby's ear doesn't isn't any different to an adult's ear, I don't think. Just obviously a lot smaller. basic shape of it. I am going to do the rest of this off camera because I uh, I can't get the right ang I can't get it at the right angle um, for working on it. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I've actually found my um, well, rest of my sculpting tools now. So which is predictable. Just isn't finishing, but uh, anyway. Better late than never. Um. Okay, this is actually a cake uh, smoother, but I use it just to smooth the surface of the head just gently. I don't rub it, I just roll it across the surface. Ever so gently, and takes out any dips and bumps. Makes it nice and smooth and professional looking. So anyway, that's my Daniel, looking very different to how he did when, when I first started out. It's not great light here, so there he is. Still a little bit more to do, some smoothing and finishing off the head and everything around here. But I'm really pleased with him. And that's him. Okay. Hi, I'm back again. Um, I was just about to put him in the oven and I realised, well, first of all, last night I sent a photograph to my friend and she told me that the <coughs> one of the eyes was a little bit more droopy than the other. So I've, I think I've corrected that. Um, always good to get somebody else's opinion um, somebody who, who will give you constructive criticism and um, and and she was absolutely right um, I'm just going to I think I'm going to give him a little bit more height on top I've, I've given him a little bit of height um, and I'm going to give him a little bit more because I think 
I think I think he he just needs a little bit more on top. Um, now I have my <coughs> I found all my all my sculpting tools. I'm uh, happy. Not that I have many. I usually only use maybe six of my favourites and the the three <coughs> most favourite I, I I did have. Which are these two gorgeous uh, wooden tools, which were handmade. I bought them from the sculpture school in, in Devon, where I went for training. Um, and the others are just these little, these little shapers. Um, specific shapes that I, I find I like. Um, whoops. And my my smoother, which I use for smoothing the head at the end. It's actually a cake decorating tool but um, I find it really good for, for just smoothing the larger areas like the head. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of clay I'm going to use my um, plaster maker which is designed for clay. It's not it's it's a more heavy duty one because uh, ordinary plaster makers you'll break I think doing this. You can try it but I think you'll break them. So I'm going to put it through here on the thickest setting. So I've ended up with a piece of a piece of clay. So I'm going to just put it vaguely to the shape I want. Around the front of the head. Uh, give it a little bit more height towards the back of the head. Just I give him because he's a person now. These these little little people. Um, this isn't a fay baby. It's just a little human, but they still they still have personalities. They still they still talk to you. They've still got souls. I think I believe. Um, <clears throat> and this little boy certainly has a soul, and he definitely. Definitely telling me what he wants at the moment. I know, sounds a bit bonkers, but so I'm just going to smooth this down, and I think it makes all the difference. I should say I. You probably, uh, but there'll be some people watching this thinking, well, that's not brilliant. She's not a great sculptor. I'm not. Never said I was a great sculptor. Um, I'm learning like everybody else. I've been sculpting only about three years. Um, it is a, a very steep learning curve. I'm really happy with some of the babies I've done and some of them I'm not. It's one of those things that um, you learn as you're going along. I need a bit more, more, more height here. I'm happy with the height of the actual head. But I need a bit more brow, so I'm going to make another, get a little bit more clay. I think he's really sweet. Okay, I'm just going to switch the, cup, the camera off while I soften this clay. Okay, I've got this clay softened, so I'm going to put it, oops. <laughs> That's my alarm telling me to get out of bed. <clears throat> Sometimes you uh, just have to get up and do something. It just calls to you. So I get up, got up really early today to have a go at doing some more of, of this. Sometimes these little small changes make a huge difference to the way the baby looks. 
it's amazing how you can just do one little tweak, one little push here or there, and the whole baby looks completely different. It's really good fun. I don't know if you can see the difference there <coughs> to how it was before. Um, we've got a bit more width of the head here. Getting the head symmetrical is one of the most difficult bits I find. It's going to be covered by hair this bit, but if you get it right to start with. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I'm just going to keep fiddling with him. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with him. I'm going to put him in the oven, bake him, and um, and then I'm going to work on his body. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I need to stop fiddling now. Okay, I'll show you when he's baked. Okay, as is, as often happens, I uh, I've been fiddling again. I. Uh, I decided I needed to change slightly the shape of his face on one side, so this happens. Maybe I should have got him in the oven quick, but I think this is the right thing to do. You don't always know till you do to make till you make a change whether it's the right change to make, particularly when you're really happy with a sculpt. But I'm fairly sure this is the right thing to do. Right, we're getting there again. That's the thing with sculpting, with, with any form of art, I think. It is what it is. It, it's there when it's there. It's not that... It's not that you're a perfectionist or that, you know, you, you've, you, you, you've got to get it perfect. It's You've got to get it right. You know when it's right. You know when you've done enough. And um, sometimes there's something that's just niggling you and you don't know what it is. And, and you can see it really. You know, you, people who look at the sculpt see see the baby's face. You see you see the sculpt and until you've got it right, then it's not right. It's not that baby. And even a slight change can change quite just a slight alteration in you know a, a, a fraction of a millimeter of the, the clay moving from one place to another can make a huge difference, good and bad. I've I've ruined many sculpts and ended up having to work on them and rework on them, but I, this is I think as near as damn it to. I will want him. I think he's. Uh, I think he's right now. You have to look at it from every angle. So you know, from the top of the head, see if it's if his face is symmetrical underneath. each side and you'll see little things that aren't quite right and once it's cooked you know it's more or less it's too late certainly is once you've put it into a into a mold made it into a mold but that is really looking good to my eye and I'm going to bum him in the oven now because I don't want to work on him anymore he's happy with that 
I know he is, I can tell. There was something not quite right before. And um, he was looking at me, I could tell him. <laughs> it's like they look at you and you're thinking, what is it that's not quite right? What is it, little boy? What is it, little soul? And I think he's happy. I think he's happy. So he's going in the oven. And I'll show you him when he comes out of the oven. Okay. Okay, little Daniel is cooked. He's out of the oven. And he's looking really good. Um, this is him. And I've decided now what I'm going to do with him. I'm actually going to make him into a cloth body kit. I'm always being asked for cloth body kits. Uh, particularly blanks. So I'm going to... Uh, make him into a kit and also sell him as as a blank kit so I think he's going to be really popular so that's Daniel so he'll be available from our World of Chi website as soon as I've done his limbs and moulded him okay thank you